I wanted to go over all the talk about Ryzen's benefits with high frequency RAM, so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMeld. Many of you know about the Infinity Fabric, but for those who don't, I'll give you a really quick overview, but check out my other video on the topic for a more in-depth one. Basically, every Ryzen processor is essentially two modules of half the cores of whatever Ryzen CPU we're talking about on one die, bridged using what AMD calls the Infinity Fabric. For example, a Ryzen 7 CPU is two CCX modules that contains four cores each and combined using the Infinity Fabric. Now, the Infinity Fabric's bandwidth is determined by the memory frequency. With lower frequencies, it has quite low bandwidth compared to L3 cache. This means when needing to access level 3 cache between the two modules, it's slowed down by, you guessed it, the Infinity Fabric. Here's the thing. It does seem the relevance of it is a little overstated lately. Let me explain. I did a video a little while back that went over benchmarks done by Tech Power Up. Basically, they did a number of tests with different games. And it showed the higher RAM didn't help in many games, and others it helped a little, with a few that it actually did help a ton in, and those games were titles that Ryzen did very strangely bad in. Like bad to were not optimized for more cores, so Ryzen's lower clocks hindered it, couldn't be the only thing type bad. And you can see that those titles were helped drastically. What this tells me is that it's not that Ryzen can't be helped by memory frequency, it's just not a huge issue, most of the time. You've got people doing a test with just a few games and declaring it's the end all difference. It's just not. But honestly, this is a good thing. It simply means many games have at least a chance to optimize for the bandwidth difference in the two cores and not intermingle too often. Now, it is possible that some games can't take that into account and faster RAM will always be beneficial with it, but it does seem plenty of games don't go back and forth between the modules often. The reason Ryzen loses sometimes is simply due to the game's inability to scale up to use all the cores. Optimization is the biggest area. For example, AMD's desktop CPU manager recently had an AMA over on Tom's hardware. He was asked about the CCX, and here was his answer. Quote, it's all over the map. There's no silver bullet, even though that's what people want to hear. The CCX latency is there, but it's not that bad, and it's not responsible for the outliers. Now, I will interject here and say that it actually kind of does seem like the outliers are a big issue and the big reason why, but he does give us an example. Quote, I'll give you an example of the kinds of things that are holding Ryzen back. A developer found that their game code automatically assumed that AMD CPUs had all physical cores, because we didn't have SMT before now. Once the game was guided to behave as it does on Intel hyper-threaded CPUs, we saw a notable boost in performance. It sounds simple, but this is what happens when a new architecture is introduced. It sounds trivial, once you know what's happening it can be easy to attack, but finding it takes work. So that comes directly from AMD, it's definitely something that they want to explain. And certainly don't take this the wrong way, I'm not telling you Ryzen has no chances in gaming. Quite the opposite, really. If, or possibly should I say when, games are developed to utilize 16 threads, Ryzen will dominate. It's simply superior to similarly priced Intel CPUs and multi-core performance. There's no denying that. It is a fact, but when the game relies on only 8 threads, the core clocks matter more as both the 7700K and Ryzen 7 chips have 8 threads. Of course, anything more than that in the i7-7700K becomes outclassed. The thing is that 4 cores and 8 threads have been the dominant space up to this point, and DirectX 12, the new API that helps devs utilize more cores, is still, well, newish. So what's my point? I just don't want people thinking they absolutely must spend tons of money on extremely fast RAM. There are chances it will help in the future for sure, and I'm really not forming a huge opinion, I merely wanted to point out that overall it doesn't seem to make a huge difference. Now there is an argument that those games are merely using all four cores on one module, but it's doubtful as that would mean the 1600 with three cores on the CCX would do more than its eight core brothers, but it doesn't. And we've talked about how the 1400 isn't fully giving it its all when benchmarked, which leads me to believe it's more of not properly utilizing SMT or optimization, etc. So if you plan on playing a game where the difference is there, it will be a big jump in performance to go with the higher RAM. Ultimately, my point is really just to relax and don't make hasty decisions on purchases until we get more information and see more optimization. Plus, you can always overclock lower frequency RAM if need be. And of course, you can buy higher frequency RAM. Just don't think it's an absolute must in all scenarios as optimization seems to be a huge factor in the future of the chip. Lastly, before I go, I'm thinking about doing an update video on picking a Ryzen motherboard, so let me know if you want to see that down in the comments. And of course, don't forget the giveaway. It'll be done with at the end of the month, and I'm going to announce all the winners on Twitter. So, so definitely click that link below in the description, and don't forget to subscribe. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, 
Have a great day.